So let's go ahead and see what happens if you go with the acid flow on this as you might normally do. So we've got this attacker controlled argument from user space. We've got uninitialized local variable input data. We've got arg is acid, input data is the destination, and we're doing a copy from user. So that's going to go ahead and make it all of this input data acid, including this little pointer here, extended state, which will point off to some other buffer in user space that is also presumed to be acid. So we've got the acid extended state being copied into another local variable, user extended state. So now that's going to point at the same other buffer out in user space. If that is a non-null value, then it's going to call zalloc, so kzalloc, which is going to be kernel, zero allocation. It's going to have however much size the attacker provided. That's how big of a buffer will be created. So it'll create a zero allocated buffer, so no uninitialized data issues there zero allocated, and then it takes the pointer and it puts it into extended state. So now this points to this zero allocated buffer instead of the acid buffer. All right, and as long as that Z KZ alloc succeeded and this is non-zero, then it's going to continue on to this next copy from user, which takes the attacker controlled size, the attacker controlled pointer to the attacker controlled data buffer, and it copies it into this buffer right here. So, you know, you of course would be um, appropriate to have your exploity sense tingling when you see attacker controlled sizes and attacker controlled copies, but in this case, it's of the form where it allocates exactly the correct amount of size in order to copy into exactly the correct amount of size buffer. Also, maybe you would have, you know, just at a trivial glance thought, well, maybe there's some sort of double fetch vulnerability going on here. But no, there's no race condition here because this input data state extended state size is not raceable. This is all now all in kernel space. So they've correctly copied this size into user space so that it's no longer changeable by an attacker if there were some possibility of double fetching. I don't know whether you can preempt the ioctals or not in that way, but even if it was possible, this would still be the right sort of coding behavior to make sure that you wouldn't double fetch that size. All right, so now this buffer is filled in with the contents of that buffer. The pointer itself is still not attacker controlled, but the data that it was pointed to is. Moves on, it checks this PMW, uh, PWM index and checks whether or not it's greater than or equal to some value. And if it is, then it errors out. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this as semi attacker controlled because they can't make it greater than or equal to that value if they don't want to error out here. And then we've got the sassy value here. We've got the sassy value of the state, which at this point is mostly attacker controlled except for that pointer. And then it calls this. And the fact that I didn't give you the definition should tell you that it's probably not that important to the vulnerability. And finally, we've got a free of a non attacker controlled pointer. Well, this is weird. Where's the vulnerability? I don't see any use after free vulnerability. I don't see any you know, attacker controlled free that could turn into, you know, an AC free C. So what's going on? Well, when in doubt, consider some other control flow paths and not everything is always exactly linear, avoiding the error cases. So on the path that we just went through, here's what you are generally seeing. You're seeing a copy from user, you're seeing this user space attacker control data, and you've got the stack in kernel space, which has the input data, that's where it's going to be copied to. So it copies, 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 and that's what you expect to see. So all of that stuff gets attacker controlled. But that doesn't seem to lead to a vulnerability if that occurs. So where's the vulnerability? What if instead the attacker went and put this user space buffer right up against some invalid memory? So a page that is not mapped into the virtual memory address space in which when accessed causes something like a page fault. If the attacker does this, then we get the copy again. And I told you as a hint to look at the documentation for copy from user. What does it do? How does it behave? Well, how it behaves is if you do a copy, 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 and then you hit some invalid memory, then the copy from user is going to zero pad the remainder of the space. Whatever requested space you said, it's going to zero extend that. But it also said in the documentation that you should call access OK before you call copy from user. The access OK is supposed to tell you whether or not this entire range that you're going to attempt to copy from, is it all valid memory? Is it all accessible? 
And so in this case, it wasn't all accessible because the attacker had played games with their memory layout in order to make it not all accessible. So they intentionally want it to fail. They intentionally are fine with it, you know, zero initializing the values after the failure point because the attacker has failed, but they've successfully overwritten this extended state with the acid pointer to acid values. So now after this failure, it's going to fall into the error case here and it's going to go to out. And at that point, now it's calling K free on an acid pointer. So this is that AC free C case of freeing an attacker controlled pointer. Now at this point, because there had been no sanity checking occurring on extended state, this pointer could point into user space or it could point into kernel space. If it was pointing into kernel space, then it would just be all of a sudden causing things to disappear out from underneath kernel space. And then the attacker could cause a reallocation, cause some different data to get put there and that could potentially benefit them. Or they could keep it pointing to user space and then perhaps the kernel heap would get, you know, take this user space data, put it into the free list, and then later on someone would allocate uh, kernel memory, but it would actually be pointing at a user space address and then that attacker could modify the contents of the user space address. So there's a bunch of different possibilities here. Again, exploitation is not uh, the primary point of this class. So, you know, you'll have to wait for the exploit classes to see how these sort of things can be exploited. But this is very similar to the situation we had with, you know, a UEFI uh, SMM user space kernel space separation uh, in the race conditions section where an attacker could, in that case, it had to be a user space free. They, they could only free something in user space. But in this case, the attacker has much more control and they can free anything in memory anywhere. So this is much more easy for an attacker to exploit than the previous example. Okay, well, what was the fix for this? Well, first of all, we have a renaming of this local variable from user extended state to kernel extended state and it is null initialized, that's good. We wanna always see initialization, don't want uninitialized access bugs. But then we get right to that copy user. There's no change in that copy user. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you're not yet because I'm just showing you this, but uh, you might think to yourself, why can't the attacker just do the exact same problem again? Well, the answer to that is because the k-free has also changed. So no longer is it taking the potential attacker controlled value that after that copy from user fails, that would free an attacker control value. Now, if the attacker plays the same game, then they will fall down to out and instead it will just call k-free on a null pointer and that's not gonna cause any problems. So the overall logic change here is basically Go ahead and do the copy as usual. If it errors out, there won't be a problem. If the attacker provided a non-zero extended state, go into the KZ alloc, so allocate a new buffer that's gonna be big enough to copy. If that fails, then error out. If it doesn't fail, then copy the attacker controlled size from the attacker controlled data into this new zero allocated buffer, the kernel extend state. And as long as that doesn't fail, then it'll go ahead and take that kernel extended state pointer, put it into the input data structure because that input data structure is going to be used here in PWM apply state. So now in this case, so the basic point is this logic is good in that if this errors out, it's safe. And for the other cases, it basically says if and only if, you know, this copy succeeds, this zero succeeds, and this copy succeeds, then is the only time that this is going to be overwritten and it won't be used here anyways, it's only gonna be used here. Okay, so this, uh, this looks mostly good to me. The only thing I would say is that uh, when you look at the documentation for copy from user, it says to call that access okay to make sure that you know these ranges are correct, that they're all gonna be accessible. So I think that they still should have added that access okay in this code, even if the logic is okay right now, you know, you never know when there's going to be a refactoring in the future. So that kind of access OK is the kind of thing which can save you if, you know, code gets moved around and all of a sudden some logic gets messed up. Of course, I also don't know in the same way I didn't know whether, you know, I, and still don't know whether the IOCTL is preemptible or anything like that. I still don't know, you know, if it was preemptible, then maybe the access OK would be raceable. Maybe, you know, an access OK would be called here and it would pass. And then if this was preemptible, then, you know, the attacker would get in and change it and the access would not be OK. I don't know, but for now, it looks mostly OK to me.